Hello, and thank you for joining me today in this exciting episode where I'm going to be learning about how kids are raised in Germany. You know, the five signs that you're raising your kids in Germany, which is interesting to me because I'm raising a child myself. He's actually the second coming of Kris Kringle, Santa Claus himself. There he is. So let's see. Let's watch this video by Antoinette Emily. Ooh, that's a cool name. Antoinette Emily. Anyway, I guess she's from New Zealand, living in Germany now. Five signs. Let's go. Hi, guys. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. In this video Thank today, you. I am going to be sharing with you the five signs that you are raising your kids in Germany. As a New Zealander who is raising my two children in Germany, I have to say that becoming a mum has been the biggest culture shock that I have experienced so far in Germany. And although New Zealand and Germany share very similar core values when it comes to raising our children, we also have very different parenting styles. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this today. And I don't want to generalize too much because I know that not all German parents are going to be like this and not all New Zealand parents are going to be like this. But uh, To me, first like thoughts would be Germany is probably more strict. But then on the other hand... Like as far as behavior, but then on the other hand, they're probably less strict because I see them, you know, kids are allowed to walk around more outside, like, you know, just wander down the sidewalk, you know, whatever. Um, and I think I saw something about you guys leaving. <laughs> you can leave the stroller outside, like in front of the store. That's just, that's mind blowing. But anyway, all right, let's go. Overall, this is what I have experienced in Germany. Okay, so with all that being said, let's get into it. Yes. One of the signs that you are raising your kids in Germany is when you are at a playground or a play group or play date, and a German mother will tell your child that they do not have to share their toy with their child. And okay, I'm gonna give you an example of this because this is something that happened to me the other day, and this still always shocks me a little bit. My little boy, Matteo, he's two and a half. And I need to know more. And he is not very good at sharing right now. He's learning, but he's not the best. Right. And we were at the playground. He brought along his favorite truck. And a little boy came over straight away, grabbed Mateo's truck. He was crying. So my first reaction when I saw this little boy crying, like most New Zealanders, I said, Mateo, why don't you share your truck with this little boy? Maybe you can play together. And then the little boy's mother, who had seen everything that went on, said to Mateo, no, you don't have to share your truck. That is your your truck and you can decide whether you want to share it or not I'm just always interesting I mean that's certainly true <laughs> like the second one's definitely more of an adult uh, value being instilled you know like it, it it is your decision whether you want to share it or not but I think the thought because it definitely it sounds like New Zealand is more similar to America in that way where it's like typically you would teach your kid to share because it's natural for them to not want to share. <laughs> so, but it's interesting to teach them that they have the decision. I was a little bit taken back when I see this reaction from German parents because this is not how the situation would be dealt with in New Zealand. And I've talked about this before in another video. I gave like an example with a little boy sharing his ball. It was a similar example and this just happens all the time in Germany. It's also happened, Matteo has gone over to kids and started playing with their toys and the mothers will jump in and say, no, that is my son's toy and he gets to decide if he wants to share it. Honestly. I think that's okay, mostly because some little kids are gross, and I don't know if you want their grubby hands and slobber all over your kids' toys. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, I get this. I can understand why German parents do this, and it makes total sense. It's just something that I am still trying to get used to. I've noticed that many German parents are very direct and very confident in their role as a parent. They're not afraid to tell you exactly what they think, Ooh. and that can be kind of intimidating when you're a new mom. Definitely. Oh, man. That would be very intimidating. 
especially a new mum who is not from Germany. Another sign that you are raising your kids in Germany is when you start to get overwhelmed with the amount of shoes and protective weather gear you need to buy for your kids. My little girl. <laughs> you need the outside shoes. You need the indoor shoes. What else do you need? Because you have the indoor shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have indoor shoes for working out and stuff, Is I believe. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Amelia is in her last year of kindergarten, and this winter, I think I had to buy her maybe eight pairs of shoes. I am not joking, and she is constantly growing. In Germany, they take kids' footwear very, very seriously, especially in winter time. So this year for winter in kindergarten, Amelia needed snow boots, gum boots, regular boots, shoes, house shoes, of course, sports shoes, and also they do sports inside when it's really cold, so she needed the these kind of like gymnastics type shoes so that was the shoe companies in germany are killing it that's genius that's that's mostly what i have to say that is some gen i don't know what they're you know i don't know if but they must be making a lot of money the shoe companies because i have literally i have two pairs of shoes but i really only need one and the only reason i have two is because i got another pair for christmas you know that's like a slip-on pair it's literally just a quicker pair to put on. That's it. The other pair is for everything else. It's like a weatherproof or like a waterproof sneaker. Seven pairs of shoes. And during that winter, she grew out of a couple of pair of her shoes. So I think I had to buy like nine pairs of shoes all up. It is <laughs> serious business trying to keep up with the kids' shoe situation in Germany. But I don't fully understand why you just because just because that's what most german people do why do you need to do it because i don't know is it because you want them to fit in and like not feel you know everybody else has all their you know their shoes for this occasion that occasion and you just want your kid to you know fit fit in kind of and and not only is it footwear it is protective wear. boots make sense i don't know how i don't have a pair of boots i need some boots for the snow the gear amelia needs a complete snow suit and a complete rain suit and she is constantly growing so i'm just constantly having to buy her all of this gear i can't and imagine in germany it's kind of like there's no excuse for bad weather the kids need to have the gear to protect them from any type of oh. weather because okay so there's a little bit of answer so regardless of the weather, you're expected to be able to get out there and do what you need to do. Okay, that makes a little more sense. Like why you would need, you know, all these different type of shoes for rain and, you know, whatever. Because in Germany, it snows, it's rainy in winter, and, you know, the kids still want to go out and play. In New Zealand, it's pretty different. I know we don't have this kind of extreme weather, but I feel like New Zealand kids, they can get away with wearing one pair of shoes for every single occasion, and we just don't really care, you know, we don't take it that seriously. Also, another thing, German parents only buy really good quality shoes for their mm. kids, which I think is a really good thing. I also buy good quality shoes for my kids, but they can be really, really expensive. So it's a good thing that in Germany, they have a lot of these children's clothing markets where you can get really good quality secondhand shoes for a really reasonable price. Okay, so when- That makes sense. That makes sense. Especially with the amount of shoes going on in circulation there. I bet there's a lot of secondhand shoes that are nice. Because shoes, I mean, the price of shoes, I don't understand it. I don't know if it's the same in Germany, but how is it, how, how does it cost like 120 bucks? US dollars for some cloth with some like padding inside of it, some rubber on the bottom. I don't understand. So seven pairs of shoes, that's like a thousand dollars. Another sign that you are raising your kids in Germany is when you can confidently breastfeed your baby wherever you want without oh, really? getting looks of disapproval. I huh. breastfed both of my kids in Germany and I was able to do it anywhere and still feel comfortable. I would do it in cafes, I would do it on the street, you know, on a park bench. I would I would just breastfeed my kids anywhere. It didn't matter if my kids were hungry, I would feed them. And I would always do it quite discreetly. You'd never like see my boob flop out or anything. So I would, you know, I'd do it in a very discreet way, but I wouldn't care where I was. I would breastfeed. And I see a lot of German mums doing this. That makes sense because, I mean, it kind of relates to the sauna thing where everybody's naked in the sauna. It's just that nudity is not inherently sexualized in Germany is what 
the takeaway was. So, you know, there's kind of a that movement in America for breastfeeding and stuff to become normalized more in public and stuff and and people do do it. But um most people prefer to be more private, shut away, you know. I remember there would be times in Germany in those early days where my baby would be like screaming with hunger and I would just have to sit down on the side of the road like on a bench and feed my baby. I never once got a disapproving look or somebody that made me feel uncomfortable. I'd even get other German women kind of giving me a look of approval, you know, good on you for breastfeeding in public, that kind of thing. I remember being in That's cool. New Zealand with Amelia when she was six months old and I just presumed it was going to be exactly the same in New Zealand as far as breastfeeding and pro breastfeeding but it actually wasn't and I remember getting some really disapproving looks for mm. breastfeeding Amelia in public. I just really appreciate the fact that Germany is so pro breastfeeding it is the most natural way to feed your baby and it shouldn't be something that is frowned upon or women shouldn't. Yeah that's really embarrassing for like American culture and it sounds like in New Zealand culture that aspect where it's like because breastfeeding is obviously natural, extremely beneficial, and why would you, why would you like discourage it in any way? Didn't have to go and hide to feed their baby. Okay, so another sign that you are raising your kids in Germany is when you are at a playground and you see a child doing something that you would consider extremely dangerous, like almost life-threatening, <laughs> and then the other German mums around are not phased in the slightest about it. They're <laughs> barely even watching. And honestly, this was one of the hardest things for me to kind of um, get you. So I am more like a German mom. <laughs> Because that's exactly how I would be. My wife would be freaking out. I'd be like, let him do his thing. You know, he'll figure it out. That's how he figures it out. You know, gets a bump on the head, he'll figure it out. Don't do that again. <laughs> Next time, don't fall. <laughs> Used to. I've talked about this in other videos. I have to bring it up again because I believe that this is a huge cultural difference between parenting in New Zealand and parenting in Germany. German parents, they let their children take risks and experiment and explore. And by doing this, I have noticed that German kids have very, very good gross motor skills at a very, very mm. young age. This definitely has a lot to do with the German parenting style of letting their children take risks. So I'm going to give you an example close to where we live there is a playground with a really really high fence made of cobblestone and the kids like to climb up on this fence they can kind of put their feet through the little gaps in the cobblestone and they climb up and they like to walk around the fence which goes around the entire playground this is a okay. very high fence oh my and gosh. I would consider this to be very dangerous like if a child lost balance they could really hurt themselves falling down except the kids in my neighborhood do it all the time they walk around this fence. My little girl Amelia, she's six, and she saw some of her friends climbing up on this fence and walking around, and she wanted to do the same, except I was the only mum that totally freaked out and said, Amelia. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, that would be a little scary, but maybe that's just because I'm a first time parent. But I would want them to do it. On the other hand, I'd be thinking, like, if you fell, oh my god. But kids are also like, I don't know, they're made different. They, they'll just bounce off, bounce off the ground, be fine. Maybe cry for a little bit. <laughs> now, if grandma was up there walking around, you know, she would probably break every bone in her body if she fell. You can't do this. Amelia was really upset that she was the only kid that wasn't allowed to walk around this really high fence. And the other German mums were just kind of like, oh, it's fine. You know, it's not that dangerous. And, you know, just she'll be fine. And so I reluctantly let Amelia climb up and walk around this fence. But in my heart, I was like, okay, this is so dangerous. I don't know whether I should be letting her do this. And then I was kind of questioning myself. I was like, am I crazy letting her do this? Or am I crazy? for not letting her do this because there's a group of German mothers here who are all not in the slightest bit worried about their children doing this. I'm the only one that's panicking about this and so I reluctantly let Amelia do it and she was absolutely fine. She didn't fall off and she wasn't like running along the fence. She was walking like slowly around but still I didn't feel comfortable about it and I don't know whether I should have let her. It's just, it was a tough kind of situation to be in because you know, Amelia was gonna be the odd one out and she really wanted to do it. So 
I don't know. I don't know where to draw the line when it comes to this kind of thing. Okay, so another sign that you are raising your kids in Germany is when you go to a swimming pool, like a public swimming pool or a lake, and you see mothers everywhere in all shapes and sizes strutting around in their bikinis and swimsuits. So they could be eight months pregnant with this huge big belly chasing around after their toddler, <laughs> and they, they don't care. They're just like, I want to have fun with my kids. I don't care that I'm eight months pregnant. Not only will you see a lot of pregnant women in swimsuits, you'll also see a lot of women postpartum in swimsuits. So, you know, for me as a man, I, this is the type of thing I don't even notice. So now that she mentions it, I don't, I, I think women do, you know, they're, they're more self-conscious about their bodies here as far as pregnancy and stuff. They won't put on a two-piece swimsuit while they're real pregnant or right after giving birth. But <laughs> she's coming at it from like a female perspective where she notices these things. I probably wouldn't notice, but that is interesting. So maybe they've given birth like two weeks ago and they've got their tiny little baby under the arm and they do not care that they have stretch marks and that they haven't lost their baby weight. I just think this body positivity is so awesome in Germany. It's definitely a good thing though. Because I think a lot of parents in other countries would refuse to get in a swimsuit if they didn't look perfect, if you know what I mean. like if they had stretch marks or you know if they were carrying a bit of extra baby weight they would hide away rather than just get in there and play with their kids and make memories and have fun with their kids yeah i definitely think people here in america when they go out like to swim to the pool and stuff it's almost like what you wear is like like you're putting on a like i don't know for some people it's like you're putting on a show like like a display like and you know so that means that if you're not happy with the way you look, you are going to be self-conscious. So I, I feel like people in Germany are just much more laid back. They're not like judging everybody about what they're wearing, maybe. <laughs> then again, I've heard about the German stare where you guys love to stare at things that are interesting. So. When I was pregnant with my little girl, Amelia, I would never, ever have gone out in public and showed my big pregnant belly off in a bikini. And I totally changed my mindset when I was pregnant with Matteo, my son. I would take Amelia to the lake, the river, the pool, and I would see all these other mums, you know, having fun with their kids, splashing around in the water, getting in there with their kids and enjoying themselves. And I was the odd one out. And then I was like, hey, I want to do that too. <laughs> so I reluctantly put on my swimsuit with my huge big pregnant belly sticking <laughs> out and I got in that water and had fun with my little girl. No one looked at me weirdly, no one cared and I was able to just get in there and make memories with my little girl without worrying about how I looked. So anyway guys, those were the five signs that you are raising your kids in Germany. I really hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you found it amusing. What the heck? If you enjoyed it, then don't forget to give it a big thumbs up way ahead of you uh i did enjoy that that was actually pretty fascinating i wonder if she said anything like um read every single comment on style of parenting uh, i want to say that german parents do teach their children to share but this doesn't mean the child has to automatically give the yeah that's kind of like how i took it like they're teaching them that they have a decision like they are they are autonomous beings and they get to control you know their property which is interesting. Um, I should have said cobblestone wall, not cobblestone fence. Oh, don't give her a hard time. <laughs> um, that was a fun video. Thank you guys for watching. It's certainly insightful since I have baby Santa Claus, you know, here. And I might implement some of these German, you know, when he's walking up, as long as he can walk. You know, right now he can't walk. <laughs> so if he was up on a cobblestone wall, I would be concerned. But when he can walk up on a cobblestone wall, you know, I'm going to be ready to dive in, but I might let him go. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Have a fantastic day. I hope to see you here again tomorrow. Subscribe if you feel like it. And go check out Antoinette Emily's channel. Goodbye.